Hi everybody, how's it going today? Thanks for watching another video. If you uh, just recently been following along, my name is Pete, dairy farmer in North Dakota. Re release a video every Wednesday. If you guys have a lot of questions, comments, uh, if I feel like I need to answer them in a video, I'll make a short video for Sunday. I'm in our calf barn here today. Thought I'd show you guys uh, something that I've been trying here the last couple days. If you guys have been watching for a while, you would know that our calves go into this calf barn for the first three, four weeks, and then they go outside into uh, individual hutches. And they're in the individual hutches for about a month. And then they go into group hutches uh, at around, I don't know, 80-ish days old for about two weeks. Kind of depends on the flow of calves, but it's typically pretty steady. Then. After the group hutches, they go into our heifer barn. So I'm kind of looking at some options. Uh, would like to go away from the hutches and have all of our calves inside a barn, particularly for the winter time, just to get them out of the wind and out of the snow, and also for the people that are feeding the calves to make make things a little bit easier when we do have to deal with snow and even rain in the summertime. It's not fun to feed calves when it's raining with the hutches outside. Uh, really happy with how calves do in the hutches they really don't have any major concerns there hutches are a really good way to raise calves they seem to do very well in the hutches but would like to make things a little bit easier labor wise and uh, seems like things are kind of trending towards group housing uh, like to see if we could make that work on our farm so what we've been trying here the last few days here, so how we uh, work it in this calf barn is we have four sections in this barn essentially. There's a concrete wall in the center dividing, uh, making four quarters in this barn. When we get to one, less than one quarter open, we'll move one quarter out. So normally this group of calves here would have been moved out to the hutches already. But I'd like to uh, look at moving these calves then instead of out of the hutches into a barn into group pens but not with automatic calf feeders and i can talk about that a little bit more why why i'm not considering automatic calf feeders at this time but I'd like to move these calves out into potentially groups of uh, eight in in this barn give them more space uh, it's what we've been trying here so we've got four and there's four in this little group here. There's five in this little group here. And then we've got five in this one. So we sold a, this pen's empty. We sold a few calves out of this row of calves. There was a few embryo calves, embryo Angus calves. So it didn't quite work out to do four, 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 four. So we got a couple pens of five. But we're, we're coming by and um, putting four buckets like we normally would of milk next to each other having the calves drink and then I've been having the guys leave the buckets in there a little bit longer after they're done drinking so I've uh, toured a, a couple farms or toured a, yeah, toured a farm here a few weeks ago with uh, Ian and my dad in South Dakota they were really nice to uh, show us uh, all their all their barns, their he they showed us their heifer barn and their calf barns that they have. They have, I think, four at the moment. So they were doing nine nine calves per pen, and I think they had about, I uh, can't remember exactly, but it was about 10 to 15 pens per barn, and their barns were mechanically ventilated. We'd probably look at a natural ventilated barn. I like the look of natural ventilation, and all of our barns are already naturally ventilated. This barn is, for the most part, naturally ventilated. We do have the tubes on the top bringing in fresh air, but we probably, depending on how this barn would work, we might need a tube or two in that barn also, but looking at something similar to how this barn is set up. But uh, they were putting their calves uh, in, this, in this farm in South Dakota, they were putting their calves into these group pens pretty much right at birth they day old calves were going into groups of nine and they um, seemed like they were having some pretty good success with that uh, I'd still want to continue using this barn we've had good luck with this barn 
continue having calves in individual pens for probably the first uh, three weeks or so and then move them into these group pens. We'll be looking at doing either yeah eight or nine calves in a group. So we have 36 calves in a quarter of this barn so that if we did nine calves in a pen that would be four pens would make things a little bit easier. But we do have this one quarter of this barn that's short five pens because we can uh, enter our connecting alley where our baby calves are so would would have to see how that would work out exactly i guess it might not be perfect but that's fine so i'll uh i'll come back here when they're feeding these calves and kind of show you how things are working uh there are uh quite a few farms that are doing something similar going away from individual housing, going to group housing, but not with automatic calf feeders. Uh, everyone I've talked to says we need to do, we need to have self lockers. And pretty much everybody I've talked to has, has said we, sh we uh, have to do bottles or they're doing bottles. And I would, I'd like to stick with pails. We uh, feed calves with pails now and that's worked really good for us. Our calves do really, yeah, don't don't have any complaints about how our calves are doing health-wise, growth-wise. I think they're doing really good. Pails uh, just to, have worked good for us. The self lockers. I'm not opposed to doing self lockers, but if we don't need them, I would rather not have them. Um, I'm looking at having something similar to what we have here, just to keep things easier for the calves when they move into that barn, so they're used to sticking their head through these openings. The concern is that, that we got a lot of calves bellering here. They're waiting for their milk. Alfredo and Alexi are just feeding the, the baby calves over there. So they'll be in here shortly to, to feed the rest of these calves. The concern is if you're feeding in group pens uh, without them uh, being locked in to where they're drinking, that they can pull their head out, steal milk from their, their uh, pen mates and cross sucking is a concern. So I've been kind of watching it here the last few days uh, when they've been coming through and feeding these calves. Uh, I think we could probably do it to prevent cross sucking by leaving the buckets in there longer. It seems like even when they're out of milk, they'll uh, continue to suck on their bucket a little while longer before they pull out and start sucking on other things. I haven't really seen any sucking on navels of other calves, which that would probably be the biggest concern, but I have seen some sucking on the ears of other calves and the tails, and that does concern me a little bit, uh, especially in the winter time. If uh, the tips of their ears are, are uh, really wet from calves sucking on them and it's uh, negative 10, negative 20 degrees, I'm a little bit concerned about freezing the tips of their ears. So that's something I'm uh, going to be watching a little bit more closely here the next couple weeks but I mean worst comes to worst if we go to a similar style opening like this we can always come by and put self lockers in it'd be uh, no problem at all to cut those gates out put new ones in with self lockers I think that would be uh, fairly simple to do that so I'm not uh, overly concerned about that calves look pretty good I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy with how the calves are doing. We uh, switched over to feeding calves four liters at their peak instead of three liters. If you guys remember, if you've been following along for a while, uh, we've now weighed, I think three groups of calves that went from our group hutches to our heifer barn that were on four liters their entire time. So there was, a, little, a time period where we switched from three to four where some calves had gotten three as their peak and then went to four but now we're in uh well now we have calves coming through that have that are uh, on this newer this new program here they're the whole time they were uh, getting milk and uh, i want to weigh more groups of calves to uh, get a better idea but so far i'm actually surprised how much heavier the calves are they're the first few loads, they've been about 30 to 40 pounds heavier than they were previously, which I was very surprised to see that big of a difference. That's uh, pretty significant. So at about 100 days of age, they're 30 to 40 pounds heavier, feeding four liters at their peak instead of three liters at their peak. And 
Visually, I can't say that I see a difference. They don't look more healthy. They don't look bigger. But going across the scale with uh, typically we're moving about 25 calves at a time. So we're getting an average. We're not weighing each calf individually, but that's still it's giving us a pretty good idea of where we're at. I want to weigh more loads to uh, before I uh, get too excited here. But that's uh, yeah, I was I was uh, very surprised to, to see that big of a difference at 100 days of age because that's pretty significant. So we'll see um, how those calves continue to do as they get older. I would like to weigh some uh, heifers that are uh, that we move to our calving barn before they have their calf and weigh some now and then once these calves come through the barn I mean that's going to take quite a while but I think it would be nice to see if uh, we do see a difference there but anyways I'll uh, I'll catch up with you guys here in this barn when we're feeding these calves milk uh, kind of show you how uh, things are going here with these group pens uh, uh, I do like having the calves together in pens it does look nicer too uh, they play together a little bit, run around a little bit more. Uh, but I'm a little bit hesitant to go away from individual pens. I mean, we've had so much good success with individual pens and the hutches. So I, the one thing I don't want to do is go to group pens and then take a step back in uh, calf health. So I, um, yeah, a little bit cautious. I'm definitely going to do a lot of research before we go this, this route. Watching a lot of YouTube videos or trying to anyways, there's not a whole lot out there on uh, calf feeding like this. It's typically it's auto feeders versus individual pens. But uh, yeah, we'll uh, catch back up with you guys when we're feeding these calves milk. Had some issues with the uh, sound yesterday. Taryn went to upload the videos and half of the videos didn't have sound. So I'm back here the next day. It's uh, Monday morning here today. Calves are ready for milk as you can hear. So um, Alfredo's off the next couple days so it's Christian and Alexi this morning. Just going through and feeding these uh, calves that we put in group pens milk here. So these calves are getting one and a half liters. One and a half liters twice a day. Kind of mentioned here yesterday, if I, I don't remember exactly what I all said, but I was going to talk about why we um, are not looking at automatic calf feeders. Uh, a few reasons. Um, our climate is part of it, some automatic calf feeders, they, they need to be in a heated building. Either you heat the whole barn and then you have to deal with having clean air in the barn, a lot of, uh, a lot of air exchanges in the barn to keep, the, keep fresh air in the barn, which can be quite expensive then to keep the barn heated in the winter time. Or you have separate rooms for each set of automatic calf feeders in the between two pens but then we'd be looking at four five of those rooms that we, we would have to keep heated bring water to electricity just makes it makes it a little bit more challenging here uh, in the winter time with freezing temperatures and the other reason is I, I really like how our calves do in individual pens and I'm a little bit hesitant to go to bigger pens if you have calves on automatic calf feeders typically they're talking about 20, 25 calves in a group. And I think that's, for, for our farm, I think that'd be a too big of an age gap between the youngest calf and oldest calf in, in those groups. Uh, no, nothing against automatic calf feeders and there's a lot of farms that have a lot of success with uh, automatic calf feeders. So definitely not trying to say that they don't work or they're not any good. Just for, for our situation, I think feeding calves in, uh, in groups, I think the best option is going to be to 
either do bottles or buckets. Um, this, the, this group has uh, four calves, and then this next one here's got five calves. Just the way the way it worked out. I don't know, we've got six calves in here, so it looks like one of the calves jumped over the divider here at some point uh, since yesterday. So, calves are, are pretty excited that they have more room to run around in, and it is a lot of fun to see see these calves have uh, kind, of, kind of jump around, play with each other. Part of the reason I'd like to try group pens is there are some studies to show that when calves are grouped together, they're more social, they learn things quicker, like going to feed or if, when they move to uh, our pens with self lockers, that they figure out the self lockers more quickly. They figure out the freestalls more quickly if they're more social. I don't know how much uh, truth there is to that, but what I also like about the way we feed calves now it's uh, very simple we have several people that are feeding calves on our farm the simpler it is the better chance there is that things are being done uh, consistently there's uh, uh, moving parts to an uh, automatic calf feeder it needs to be thoroughly cleaned every day i also like the, the simplicity of the milk taxi we use now it doesn't work we have a spare they grab the spare and they're off they go if something doesn't work with an automatic calf feeder somebody has to go look at it immediately otherwise you get behind with feeding calves and that's not good and switching out milk taxis that's something that they can do themselves if we had automatic calf feeders that'd be something that more than likely I would have to take care of and just like to keep things things uh, working consistently as much as possible without me needing to uh, babysit the calf feeders because they're gonna have issues just like our milk taxi has issues then it just depends on what you want to deal with and what your what your management style is I guess very similar to milking robots I've told you guys before in the past that we're not really considering milking robots at this time and for for somewhat similar reasons uh, things are going very well the way that they are so really don't have any any current need to be looking at other options now of course that doesn't mean that there's something wrong with milking robots it just really depends on uh, if you want to work with the system you have or how you want to want to do things if you have milking robots and you want to make them work you make them work if you uh, milk in a parallel parlor and you want to make it work then you make it work we've had, we've had a lot of success with feeding calves in individual pens but we'd like to uh, or I would like to get rid of the hutches that we have outside just they work really good but just a lot of extra work especially in the winter time when you have uh, snow to deal with ice they get frozen to the ground sometimes you break them trying to break them free uh, we do use uh, a lot more bedding in the hutches than we do in this barn I would imagine if we went to group housing in a little bit of a bigger barn we'd use less bedding as well at least I've kind of figured that we would and we'd be able to use uh, right now we use small squares in this barn small squares in the hutches which work really good for these applications but they're extra cost to smaller square bales compared to a large square or a round bale and a little bit more work as well so if we were to go to group pens, we'd set it up in a way where we could come in with a small loader or a skid steer and bed up those pens and clean out those pens. So we would just be swinging gates open, coming with a loader, just very similar to how we do it in our calving pen and our and the bedded pack in our heifer barn. We'd also save on some labor because we hutches are labor intensive for when you're cleaning them out. And also when you're feeding calves, it takes a little bit more time. If you, have, if you have them in groups like we have them here, and they're all in line in one barn, you can come by and feed a group of 100 calves pretty quickly. And it would also make it a lot easier to feed in pellets because you're just going down the line, down the feed line. And we'd be 
the, the farm that we visited in South Dakota here a little bit ago, they had uh, water troughs in their pens for these young calves and they had heated ones so they were actually warm not just heated to the point to keep them from freezing but it was actually warm water it was like 70 degree water which I think that uh, that would be pretty nice to have that I think it would really get these calves to uh, drink water more quickly especially in the winter time if they have access to warm water all the time the way we're doing it now is uh, when temperatures are really cold, we're feeding warm water to the older calves twice a day, but then coming back and dumping that water out so it doesn't freeze in the buckets. So that could be a, a good improvement. Just like I mentioned before, some of the things that I am a little bit concerned about is the cross sucking and sucking on each other's ears, navels and teats. We don't want to end up uh, making uh, creating navel infections or or uh, having heifers become three teeters because they were sucked on as calves giving them mastitis I haven't seen any suck on navels or or teats yet but I've definitely seen them sucking on each other's ears and they're kind of sucking on each other here now but it it doesn't take a whole lot of time for them to kind of stop stop sucking on each other like these calves here they're just kind of hanging around, some of them are eating pellets, kind of licking their buckets. See this girl's eating pellets here, both, both of these are. I think I'll end this video here. If you guys have uh, questions, comments, post them down below. I do uh, really enjoy working with stuff like this. I, I uh, really enjoy the calves and the heifer part of the farm. It's always fun to to uh, see how these calves are doing if they're doing well uh, these calves are going to be the future of our farm so it's if we can make little um, improvements little adjustments here and there it's uh, something that I get uh, excited about don't really get excited about a lot of things but uh, this, this is something that I do uh, really enjoy and appreciate you guys watching and uh, hopefully we'll see you in the next video